So now I want to be able to give you the scripture that the Father has been giving me this whole week as you know there's just been one scripture that keeps coming since Monday as we got back on um, you know we were there Monday then Monday night we got back and then I've been busy as I've had um, a lady here that is from the States that is um, got a vision for the Negev you know for the desert and Having listened to her testimony, oh wow, I truly know that the Father has got a very big plan for this desert. And I truly understand um, that the desert is the face of the Father. And this is where we meet with Him, you understand. And that's why He brings you into that wilderness where you learn His precepts, His ordinances, His ways is what He needs to reveal to us. And so, this whole week, the Father has been, keeps giving me the scripture, and I keep saying, Abba, Father, what are you saying to me? And he's talking to me about true worshippers, and dropping things in my spirit, which is preparing for me to be able to um, understand, and for me to be able to, myself, start to live out, because if I cannot teach anything that I myself am not even living out and and this is why he is wanting um, me to sit still because if I don't sit still he's not able to reveal to me the things that he wants to say in this moment in this time and so Abba kept giving me this scripture and it kept coming and I kept receiving the same scripture and it is from John chapter 10 and it's interesting because it is in John chapter 10 that speaks about Yahushua being at the dedication of the temple at the Feast of Dedication, not the dedication of the Temple, but at the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem. And him wanting me to understand what it is that he's saying right now, because this is tying in with so many other things that he's speaking. Because understand, we need to be in a place right now where we understand. I mean, the Father has spoken, he declares scripture, he's saying that that's it. It's enough. He's going to he's going to judge now. This is what he's going to do. It's no longer about what man is going to do, it's about what he's going to do. And if he's going to unleash his things upon the earth, then no man's gonna stop what he's gonna do. If he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And by whichever means he wants to do it, he's going to do it. And we need to understand that the only thing that we can do is what every time, how many times he's given me Isaiah 26. And the only thing that I can say, every time he gives me Isaiah 26, I cringe because I say, oh, Father, have mercy. But you know what? I can only pray, Father, in your judgment, remember mercy. Because it's in that judgment that people will learn righteousness and turn back to him. And so that is why he's have got need of his intercessors to be able to be praying and interceding and crying out for them, for the people to change. For the people to turn back to him, for the people to see him, for the people to once again have ears to hear and eyes to see. Awake, awake, O sleeper, awake out of your slumber. And you see, he needs to bring us into the wilderness because it's in the wilderness that we need to hear. And we need to obey. It's in the wilderness that we need to learn to shama. And so, let us read John chapter 10 because this is a scripture that he is telling me, I don't know how many times already this week I have received the scripture alone. Truly, truly, I say to you, 
he who does not enter through the door into the sheepfold but climbs up by another way that one is a thief and a robber so there is only one way to be able to enter into the sheepfold they can't try and sneak in through this way or sneak in through that way there's only one way into the sheepfold but he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep The shepherd of the sheep is the door, who is Yahushua himself. The doorkeeper opens for him, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Listen. The doorkeeper opens for him. So he enters through the door. He is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens for him. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So if he speaks and says, come out from among them, you come out. And when he has brought out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. So, you can't get into the sheepfold if you're not a sheep. You can't enter through any other way except through the door. And he is the shepherd. And they shall by no means follow a stranger, but shall flee from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger, of the strangers. Okay, so we see here that so he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens for him and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So wherever we are that we need to be able to hear his voice for him to lead us in the way that we ought to go. And I tell you now, there's never been a time such as this right now that we need to hear his voice. Never. There has never been a time. Now look at what he says. He says, And when he has brought out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. And they shall by no means Follow a stranger, but shall flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. I don't care how pious they are. I don't care how holy they are. I don't care how up there they are. If they are not doing things that are according to this word, and if they, not do, they do not uphold this word, and they do not know Abba Yahuwah and Yahushua, then they are not a sheep or a shepherd that we should follow. I don't care how holy they are. I don't care. And it says, Yahushua used the figure of speech, but they did not know what he had been saying to them. Yahushua therefore said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. There, he's telling them now. Now he's trying to explain to them, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. You see? So they will come looking like they are so holy and speaking the right things and putting a temple there and putting an altar there and putting whatever and saying to you, oh no, but this is good. It's all the unity of the brethren and we're all coming together and this is one side the Pope doing, the other side the, the, the Sanhedrin doing and this is what's going on all around us. 
And now I'm standing watching even people of this Hebraic roots movement saying, but who are you to stand up against this? Because these people stand by the word. And Yoshua says, The thief does not come. I am the door who enters, okay, he says, I am the door whoever enters through me, he shall be saved and shall go in and shall go out and find pasture. I am the door. He's the only door. There isn't another door into that sheepfold. The thief does not come except to steal, to slander, to destroy. I have come that they might possess life and they might possess it beyond measure. Understand, there are a sheep, there are, there are wolves in sheep's clothes and they are coming and presenting this beautiful thing and saying, but you know what? This is all done in the name of the Father and this is all holy and this is all wonderful and leading the sheep in and there's great deception coming in. But they are not the ones that are going to bring life as a matter of fact. Their plan and their scheme is to bring death and destruction. Father knows the agenda. But yet they look so pious and they look so holy. And we are going to be deceived because we do not understand that they are taken out by the thief to bring about the thieves and the enemy's plans. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You see, the good shepherd is the one who is laying down his life for the sheep. Only Yahushua lay down his life for the sheep. He's the only one who lay down his life for us. He's the only mediator to the Father. He was the ultimate sacrifice for us. But the hiling and not being a sheep a shepherd who does not know who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. And you see in the end, those people are going to leave you in the lurch and you will be taken out by the enemy because you followed them and believed what they said. And people are going to be speaking deceptive things in your ear. Oh, don't listen to that. Don't listen to those people. Like I'm being told now, oh no, that is anti-Semitic. Don't listen. It's anti-Semitic. Now, the hyling flees because he is a hyling and he's not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I listen to what he says. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Do we know him? Mine know me. And that word know is the word perceive, recognize, understand, become acquainted with him as a husband and a wife. They are to know him. They know him. That's the very thing that he spoke when he said that he gives them eternal life. That they will know me. And even as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's why I said Yahushua is the only one who lay down his life for those sheep. No one else. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and the other sheep I have which are not of this fold. So, this was already talking about the sheep um, 
that would have been the house of Israel at the time that he was speaking and he's speaking to those Jews that were walking around to these Hebrews that were walking around and then he says and other sheep I have which are not of this fold I have to bring them as well and they shall hear my voice and they shall be one flock with one shepherd they will be one flock one shepherd. So you see, that is the unity of the faith that needs to come. That is John chapter 17 in all its fullness when it says that no greater love is there for you to love, for you to lay down your life for a brother. No greater love is there for you to love, that you need to love one another as I have loved you. And Father, the love that is in me will be in them. And the love that we have for one another will be in them. All John chapter 17. Because of this, the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life in order to receive it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have authority to lay it down. And I have authority to receive it again. This command I have received from my father. Again there came a division amongst the Yodim because of these words. And many of them said, he has a demon. He's mad. Why do you listen to him? And you see, that's what's going to come in these last days. They're going to say, are you mad? What are you speaking? Where do you come from speaking things like that? What authority do you think you come under? Who's given you that authority? Who do you think you are? You are a mad, 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 mad person. You are anti-Semitic. You are this, you are that. And these are the things that are going to come and they're going to be said to you. And then there's going to be division. Because remember, you will be hated for his name's sake. And brother will turn against brother in the last days as it is spoken in Matthew chapter 24. He didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. And in a family, father is going to raise up against, against son, mother against daughter, brother against sister. For his name's sake. And there's going to be great division that's going to start taking place. It says, no one, uh, right, again they came at a right, and it says, and many of them said, he has a demon, he's mad, why do you listen to him? Others said, there are no words of one possessed by a demon. Is a demon able to open the eyes of the blind? These are not the words of a one possessed by a demon. Is a demon able to open up the eyes of the blind? Now listen carefully. At that time, the Chanukah came to be in Jerusalem, and it was winter. So when Yoshua was speaking this, was exactly at the time of when it was Chanukah. There you were sitting and you were saying, My sheep will hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they shall not follow. I lay down my, my life for the sheep. Listen to what I'm saying to you people. I am the one who's going to lay down my life for you, is what Yahushua was saying. Great deception is on the horizon. All these things are going to be raising up and there's going to be this temple that's going to stand and people are going to say, wow, do not forget who was the one that laid down his life for you. Who? And these are the great deceptions, but yet he says clearly, my sheep will hear my voice and the voice of a stranger, voice of strangers, they shall not follow. But you know what the problem is? People have become so learned with so much knowledge and they do not even know how to hear the voice of the Father. They have studied and studied and studied and researched this and researched that and researched another thing and yet they do not even know how to hear the voice of the Father. Yahushua wants us now more than ever to be able to hear his voice. Now listen to what he says. And that this time the Chanukah came to be in Yerushalayim and it was winter, which is exactly the season that we now. And Yahushua was walking in the set-apart place in the Porsche of Solomon, Shlomo. So the Yehudim surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in suspense? 
if you are the Messiah, say to us plainly. So the whole thing of what's going to come in these last days is going to be about the Messiah. Oh, there he is. Don't go. Oh, there he is. Don't go. Because many messiahs are going to raise up. Many are going to raise up in this hour. And they're going to say, but that is not the messiah. And they're going to come and try and deceive you. If it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. Now, you know, I didn't think I would see the day that I could see the elect. The elect of the Hebrew Roots movement being sucked in to deception. I never thought it could be possible. But I'm seeing it happening before my very eyes. Because people are not learning. You know, one of the things that's come out of the Hebrew Roots movement that is one of the saddest things that's hap happened is that they've become so much scholars of the Word. And I'm not going to say that the scholars of the Word is not good, but they have no longer learned to discern His Spirit. They no longer learn. They don't no longer know how to discern His Spirit because it's just study, study, research, 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 research. But yet, what about just coming and sitting before the Father and asking Him plainly, my sheep hear my voice? Which means He speaks. Which means we ought to know His voice. And that is one of the saddest things that has come out of the Hebrew Roots movement is that we have taken the Ruach of Yahuwah and we have not allowed ourselves to be able to grow in the things of the Ruach, but it's only the letter of the word. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't anything wrong with the letter of the word, but that is why the Father says he's looking for true worshippers that worship him in spirit and in truth. So you need his Holy Spirit and you need the truth of his word. You can't just be like the church that has, I mean, in the church, that's one of the things that they learned was how to be led by the spirit, how to be able to receive the spirit, how to be led by the spirit, how to be able to hear the spirit, how to do things according to the spirit. And that is where the church is in leaps and bounds in knowing the things of the Spirit. But when it comes to the truth of the Word, which is what the Holy Spirit is supposed to teach them, to come back to the truth of the Word, that's where they're sorely lacking. When it comes to the Hebrew Roots movement, this is the other way around. They now have the truth of the Word, and they know how to obey the truth of the Word, but they do not know how to hear the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh, that just be able to lead them in normal things, to be able to be led by His Ruach HaKodesh. To cultivate that spirit man within us. To be able to know what it means to be led by his Ruach. And in this day and age, we need both. Because that's the true worshipper. My sheep hear my voice. And Yoshua said to them, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness concerning me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So are we going to follow Yahushua unto death, if we have to? I give them everlasting life because that's what it means to know him. To perceive, recognize, become acquainted with him. Let's quickly look at John chapter 17. Let's look and see. John chapter 17 says, and this is everlasting life, that they should know you, the only true Alua and Yahushua Mashiach whom you have sent. So everlasting life is to know Abba Father Yahuwah and Yahushua whom he has sent. And that word we know is the word in the Hebrew language known as Yada, 
which is to perceive, recognize, understand, become acquainted with, as with a husband and a wife in extreme intimacy. Are we in that place with him that we know him in that way? Are we in that place? Do we know what's on his heart? Do we know what grieves him? Do you know what is on his heart for you to be able to pray? No, we have a prayer meeting and we just say, okay, we're going to have a prayer meeting. But instead of seeking his heart and finding out what's on his heart, no, we just start to pray. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one, now listen carefully. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. The same word that was given in, um, that's the same word that was given to us in Isaiah chapter 43. Snatch them out of the father's hand. I and my father are one. Again, the Yehudim picked up stones to stone him. So you see, why did they want to stone him? Because he said, I and the Father are one. If you are serving the Father, then that means that you will accept me as the Messiah. If you say you love the Father, you will accept me as the Messiah. But they did not. They did not accept him as the Messiah. And you see, what was the whole thing of the Chanukah about? At the time of the Chanukah, that was what everything was about. It was about being able to bring that, what did, what did the Antichrist do? The Antichrist that, well, it was a shadow of the Antichrist. Um, you know, in the time of the Maccabees, it would have been like the time of the Antichrist that we're coming into right now, where he's going to declare himself as being the Messiah. And and people are going to accept him as being the Messiah. And how many people are going to fall by the wayside? Fall because they did not believe the truth. Fall because they went into the deception. So if we go to Second Thessalonians, which is what I really want to be able to um finish up with in Second Thessalonians where he turns around and he says and then the lawless one shall be revealed when the master shall consume Second Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 8 and then the lawless one shall be revealed whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming the coming of the lawless one is according to the work of the working of Hasatan with all power, signs, wonders of falsehood. So do you see what I'm saying? The greatest deception is the falsehood that we're going to see if you do not know the truth. Knowing what you stand for limits what you fall for. If you do not know the truth of this word, if you do not know the things that Yahushua, Yahushua has spoken, if you do not know the ways of Yahuwah, if you do not know his voice, if you do not know how he goes about doing things, and there is a way that is this word needs to be within us but understand there is a relationship that we need to have with him in how we walk with him in how he wants to reveal to us the things that are in heaven as though they are on earth and he wants to speak to us and he wants to reveal things to us and in this hour we need to know his ways so that we be not deceived you know I remember listening to a story where someone said, you know, when for you to be able to to um, to study uh, like a counterfeit note, so you do not study the counterfeit. You study the original, and knowing the original will be able to make you see the counterfeit. So you got to study the original note. So if we are going to look at a hundred rand note and you, you're not going to study the counterfeit hundred rand note, 
you're going to study the original because when you know that original 100% you are going to be able to see what the counterfeit is so if we do not know the one who is the shepherd of the sheepfold the one who says my sheep will know my voice and the voice of a stranger they shall not follow the one who says that they follow me wherever I go the one that says that they hear my voice and they will follow me Are we willing to follow him even unto death because we will stick to this word. We will stick to the fact that if it says that we are to keep the Sabbath and the Sanhedrin brings in the laws that says you may not keep the Sabbath, you may not speak his name, you may not do these things and we, we are going to fear man as opposed to fear him. That is when we are going to be put to the test of our lives that we are going to be able to have to follow what he says and not what man says and that we are going to have to get to a place of where we trust him and we believe in him no matter what. So it says the coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Hasatan with all power signs wonders of falsehood and with all deceit of unrighteousness and in those perishing because they did not now listen listen carefully and with all deceit of unrighteousness in those perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved we need to love the truth unto death because we love him what does it mean to love him let's go to john chapter 14 and it says if you love me john chapter 14 verses 15 says if you love me you shall guard my commands and i shall ask the father and he shall give you another helper to stay with you forever the spirit of truth so you see the ruach hakodesh is the spirit of truth He's not going to tell you to do something that is contrary to what he stands for. My sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they shall not follow because it is the Ruach of Yahuwah. It's the spirit of truth that is within us. The seven spirits given in Isaiah Chapter 11, Spirit of Wisdom, Spirit of Might, Spirit of Counsel, Spirit of the Fear of Yahuwah. Are we fearing Him above other things in our life? Do we fear Him above the sin that is there that we will continue to partake in? Do we fear Him enough to want to turn from it? And I shall ask the Father and he shall give you another helper to stay with you forever. And who is that? The Spirit of Truth, the Counselor, the Ruach of Yahuwah, who is going to lead us, who is going to guide us, who is going to teach us in his ways. The Spirit of Truth whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him for he stays with you and shall be in you because it is the spirit of Yahuwah himself. I shall not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. Yet a little while the world no longer sees me, but you shall see me because I live and you shall live. These are words that we need to take and we need to meditate on them. Because there's going to come a time where people are going to be denying Yahushua, believe me, let me tell you, it's coming. In that day you shall know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. So what temple is there? What tabernacle is there? He's not wanting to dwell in a tabernacle made of man's hands. He's to dwell in us. The Father and I am in Him and we are in you. And I in you. It says in that day you shall know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. 
he who possesses my commands and guards them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. Listen carefully. How can the Father love anybody that doesn't love the Messiah, Yahushua? He who possesses my commands and guards them is he who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. So all who are truly obeying his commands, seeking the Father, they have to eventually get to Yahushua, who was given by the Father. Yehuda, not the one of, said to him, Master, not of the one of Korea, said to him, Master, what has come about that you are about to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Yahushua answered them, If anyone loves me, he shall guard my word, and my Father shall love him. Remember, he didn't even just say commands there. He said, God, he's told you, obey his commands. Now he's saying, if anyone loves me, he shall guard my word and my father shall love him and we shall come to him and make our stay with him. That's why I'm saying father wants habitation, not visitation. He wants to make his stay in those who are guarding his word, who are walking in his ways, who are hearing him. Not just the written word, but the spoken word. When the Father says, go here, do this, do that. I need you to do this thing for me. Remove this thing from you. Go here, go there. The shepherd is leading you out of the sheepfold. He says, come out. And he who does not love me, does not guard my words. And the words which he, you hear is not mine, but of the Father who sent me. These words I have spoken to you while still with you, but the Helper, the set-apart Ruach, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. So do you see, it is important that we are able to read his word, study his word, so we need to know the truth so that we can be led by his Ruach HaKodesh. We need both. So now if we continue to read Second Thessalonians, and it says, so for this reason, in verse 11, chapter 2 verse 11, for this reason, Yahuwah sends them a working. So now let's see, let's, let's back up, and it says in verse 10, And with all deceit of unrighteousness in those perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. You see, your love for the truth will bring true salvation. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The love of the truth in the end, even though you will be persecuted, even though you will be put to death, you will love the truth of his word unto death and you will keep it because you love his truth. And for this reason, Yahuwah, now understand, Yahuwah sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood. So there's going to be a working of delusion that's going to bring the falsehood in order that all shall be judged, all should be judged, who did not believe the truth, but have delighted in the unrighteousness. So what is coming that's going to bring such unrighteousness? But we ought to give thanks to Yahuwah, always for you brothers, beloved by the Master, because Alua from the beginning chose you to be saved, and you know, there it's interesting because in the, my friend was reading, we were reading the scripture, um, Ada, and she was reading it in her Bible, in the, you know, in her language, in Suvlakia's language, in the language. And it said, the first fruits in set apartness, and f it says, 
from the beginning chose you to be saved first fruits in set apartness of spirit and belief in truth. So you've got to be set apart in spirit and belief in the truth. Now here again, you see the spirit and you see the truth of the word. Unto which he called by our Yahuwah good by our good news for the obtaining of the esteem of our master Yahushua Mashiach. So I leave you with this word. I leave you with this word that the Father has given that I am to release in this time as we are going into a time now of holidays and it's holiday season there and let this be a time of great introspection. Do we truly love him that we will obey him no matter what? And so I want to finish off with a poem. As today the Father got me to pick up my poem book. That I brought my poem book with me this time. And I had forgotten about this poem book. But today a friend of mine was sharing with me about a storm that happened last night there um, out in Pretoria side as she was driving home. And there was the storm. And throughout the night she could hear the storm. And then... I was reminded of a poem that he gave me that was to do with a storm. But then I thought most of the poems, a lot of the poems that the Father has given me in this poem book was written in December and in January, February, March of 2008 and 2009. So I thought to myself, let me go see if there was any poem written on the 15th of December 2008 which will be exactly 10 years ago today. And at half past 11 at night, as I put the time of when he gave it, on the 15th of December, 2008, Abba gave me this poem. And I want to share it with you today. And I want to leave this with you as may this be the cry of your heart as you hear this poem, that this may be the cry of our heart. This was the cry of my heart this was the cry of my heart 10 years ago. And I pray that 10 years later that I could truly be able to come into the manifestation of this poem. And it says, O Yahuwah, teach me to love. A love that, that's pure and so divine. A love so deep that cannot hide. A love that casts out all fear. A love that comes from drawing near sorry the poem in the beginning is called I need your love because this has always been the greatest cry of my heart to the father teach me to love as you love so I'll start again I need your love oh Yahuwah teach me to love a love that's pure and so divine a love so deep that cannot hide a love that casts out all fear a love that comes from drawing near, a love so tender and so kind, a love that only in you we find. O beloved of our soul, fill us with your love and make us whole. It's this love we desperately seek. Come fill us with this love so deep, a love that, ca that calms a raging sea. Let this love flow through you and me from us. A love that sets a fire ablaze, a love, a love that will start in, in us a new craze. O oh, Yahuwah, it's this love alone that we desire, a love that will come and take us higher. Like the crashing of the waves, this love will roar. Let this love in us arise, so with you we will soar. A love so intimate and true, a love that can only be found in you. O oh, Yahuwah, to you alone do we cry. Give us this love so that with you we can fly. A love so full of compassion that will fill us with your passion. That love you gave Adam and Eve, to us that love will you cleave. 
the love you promised in John 17, that love in us will it be seen. O beloved of our soul, for that love alone do we long, that love that creates in us a new song, a song for all to hear, what that love does when you are near, a love that comes from above, that creates in us a heart of pure love. O Yahuwah, your love is so holy, this love so deep truly makes us holy. Set us apart for all to see the beauty of Yahushua Mashiach, of Yahushua Mashiach's love through us. That's what this love is meant to be. Amen. May Abba bless you all. Shavua Tov to you all. Shalom.